Hello, and welcome to another UTRGV You Teach Micro Lecture. Today's micro lecture will be part two of our classroom management strategy series, Nonverbals. In the classroom management micro lecture series, we will be covering classroom management strategies that fit in the following five broad categories getting your students' attention and keeping it, nonverbals, keeping students engaged, reinforcing positive behavior and clear and consistent consequences. Some of the strategies that we will be going through in this series will fit into more than one category. That's not only okay, it's a great thing. Make sure to pay special attention to those strategies because they will be particularly effective for your students. Today, we will be focusing on part two, nonverbals. So what are nonverbals? Nonverbals are any classroom management strategy you use to communicate with your students that doesn't involve speaking or talking. Nonverbals are super important. So important that here at UTeach, we like to say that nonverbals should be 90% of your classroom management strategies. It's time for a five second pause and think. Please take five seconds to pause and think about the following question. Why are nonverbals so important? Why should they be the vast majority of your classroom management strategies? To answer this question, let's first look at what happens when you don't use nonverbals. Here we have a teacher with a student who is not paying attention. She says something like, Joe, please stop talking. I need you to pay attention. The teacher has singled out Joe in front of his classmates. If Joe stops talking and gives his attention to the teacher, everything is fine. But this situation could easily go sideways. All students have pride. When singled out in front of their peers, even by a well-meaning teacher, a student's pride can be hurt. When this happens, the student might do one of two things. One option is that the student may withdraw. This happens when a student feels ashamed or embarrassed. When a student withdraws, they become quiet, dejected, and no longer want to participate with their peers or in the class. Another option is the student may become confrontational. Some students, when they feel shame, especially in front of their peers, decide to lash out. This is not a situation you want to be in. The student feels like they need to regain control and respect in front of their peer. You, as the teacher, feel like you need to show that you're in charge and in control of the situation. Meanwhile, the rest of the class, instead of focusing on the content, is focusing to see who will come out on top of the situation. Situations like these can quickly get out of hand. If a student does become confrontational, we'll talk about how to de-escalate the situation in a little bit. But for now, let's focus on how to keep either of these situations from happening in the first place. While you don't want a student to be confrontational, you also don't want them to become withdrawn. So how do you keep either of these situations from happening in the first place? Non-verbals. Let's look at how this teacher handled the disruptive student a little differently. Notice how this time the teacher got the student quiet without saying anything? What did she do? She moved next to the student. We call this proximity. Just physically move next to the student whose behavior you want to redirect. It's a simple premise, but it really works. Your physical presence can be enough to redirect student behavior. The best part of proximity is you don't have to say anything. By avoiding singling out a student in front of his or her peers, you de-escalate the situation so the student doesn't feel ashamed and therefore become withdrawn or confrontational. If proximity alone isn't working, try our second strategy, eye contact. In addition to standing next to the student, give them a stern, no-nonsense look. I like to refer to this as the teacher death glare. Eye contact can be particularly helpful if you can't use proximity and physically move next to the student or you have multiple students you need to redirect. Like with proximity, this technique is simple, effective, and doesn't require any words. Proximity and eye contact are powerful tools, but don't think you need to use them only after the student has become disruptive. The best defense is a good offense. Many teachers feel like they need to stay in front of the room or by the projector. Whenever possible, move around the room. Watch as our teacher moves around the room while she is instructing. Her proximity helps keep the students in the back of the room just as focused as the ones in the front. 
By using proximity throughout the lesson, you can avoid off-task and disruptive behavior before it ever starts. If you have two or more instructors in your class, have each of you take a different side of the room. When one instructor moves to the left, have the other move to the right. When one moves to the front, have the other move to the back. Just one quick note about proximity. Moving around the room is great, but try not to have your back to the class or to any students. You can't stop disruptive behavior if you can't see it. So try to move along the periphery of the classroom and position your head so you can always keep eye contact on the class. Proximity and eye contact should take care of the majority of your classroom management issues. However, there are times when nonverbals are not enough and you will need to verbally address students. In these instances, do so quietly and on a one-to-one -one basis. Just like we mentioned at the beginning, students are more prone to lash out if they feel singled out in front of their peers. If a student is becoming confrontational, calmly request that you move to a more private area of the classroom or, if possible, the hallway. Allow the student to explain why they are frustrated or mad. Listen to the student, rephrase what you think you heard them say, and then ask if your paraphrasing was correct or if you misinterpreted them or if they need to add any clarification. Once you have demonstrated that you understood the student and his or her viewpoint, state your own assessment of the situation. Stick to the facts and try not to inject emotion, opinion, or previous behaviors into the conversation. Once you've had both given your sides of the story, try to come up with a solution and agree on it. If the student can come up with a reasonable solution, that's even better because they'll have more buy-in in making it work. At this point, the two of you can return to the rest of the class. If you feel like you need to address the class as a whole, keep things short and simple. Say something like, Joe and I had a bit of a misunderstanding, we talked it over, and we came up with a solution. Then move on with your lesson. Going into specifics can damage the student's trust or lead to new confrontations. Let's recap. In today's classroom management micro lecture, we learned about the importance of nonverbals. Singling out students in front of their peers can cause them to withdraw or become confrontational. To avoid this, use nonverbals. Today, we talked about two nonverbal strategies proximity and eye contact. Proximity involves moving physically closer to students so that your physical presence can redirect off-task or misbehavior. To make proximity more effective, use it throughout your entire lesson by moving around the room. To make your proximity more effective, also use eye contact. A stern look can redirect behavior whether you're next to the student or across the room. To maximize your eye contact, don't have your back to the students and always make sure to be facing the class. If you do end up needing to verbally address a student, make sure to do it quietly and one-on-one. -on -one. If the situation is starting to get out of hand and you need to de-escalate, start by talking with the student in an isolated part of the classroom or hallway. Let them express their frustration, calmly tell them your side of the story, and then come up with a solution together. This has been a UTRGV You Teach Micro Lecture. Thank you for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you at the next part of our series on classroom management strategies. Part 3, Keeping Students Engaged.